Okay, so this is the first entry to my NaNoWriMo 2021 video blog, or vlog as the kids say, oh, so I've heard. Don't laugh at me. <laughs> <laughs> it's just more for accountability because if every Sunday I say I'm going to do a blog about what I've done this week and then I don't do anything that week, I'll have to say so and then I'll feel bad. So I'm using guilt as a sort of motivator here. First of all, uh, NaNoWriMo is the National Novel Writing Month, although it should be international because I think it's all over the world, not just in England. I don't think even started England, I think it's an American thing. Where one writes 50,000 words across the 30 days of November and so at the end of November you have a lovely 50,000 word novel. It has sort of branched out into a general like goal making website so you don't have to do 50,000 words in November, you can do like 3,000 over a weekend or 100,000 over the year or whatever but traditionally it's 50,000 words in November. There's also an April one, I think it's like April script friendly we were like a 100 page script. I did that once in school, it was about Doctor Who going to a school because you know of course it was, it was pretty bad. I've only succeeded in NaNoWriMo once in 2013 when I first started. Uh, the book I wrote was terrible because I was like 15 but I did get uh, some chocolate out of it from school for a French study class that I didn't want to be at. This year I am approaching NaNoWriMo a bit differently um, because say so I've failed many times <laughs> over the last like seven years. Um, so I'm actually taking a different approach. Instead of coming at it from the angle of wanting to have a, a completely lovely written novel I can look into publishing at the end of the month, I'm actually focusing on this more as a writing exercise or warm up for the actual work I want to do. This is mostly because I decided only last minute to do NaNoWriMo this year, so I had no time to plan anything, but also because I've never actually tried to do a sort of pants novel I suppose would be the phrase. Um, I am more of a plotter than a pantser, but I'm not fully either. Um, but I'm going to this complete blind, I've got nothing planned at all. So every single day is just, I don't know what I'm going to write, so it means I don't know what I'm working towards. Which does take some of the pressure off somewhat, because I'm not thinking I need to get to this point, or I need to get from A to B, it's let's see what I end up writing and what happens. So I'm not expecting something beautiful to come out at the end of it, I'm just expecting to be able to say that I completed it and then I get a little, little boost of joy. And yeah, as I said, I'm sort of uh, treating this more like a writing warm-up so that when I actually write the stuff I am more interested in, I've sort of loosened up the writing muscles in the same way one would warm up before writing a marathon. Um, and it has actually been quite useful so far. Um, so I've done six days of writing. I've not written today yet because I've just got back from church and I've not had time, but I will. I know what I'm gonna write today, which is rare. Um, so it's been quite an interesting learning experience, writing without sort of having a clear goal in mind. Um, and the way I've been doing it, because it's difficult to go something completely blind with nothing to work with, I can't do that. So I've actually been using the Merlin Tarot to prompt me every day. So obviously Merlin Tarot is like based on tarot cards. I don't have any tarot cards, because I don't really do like tarot, because I think it's silly. Tarot cards actually started literally as just like playing cards for games, so it was not until like hundreds of years later that people decided they could tell the future with them. It's a very specific way of reading them because it's based on like the Merlin texts by Geoffrey of Monmouth or whatever his name is, like the Vitae Merlin I and stuff like that, um, rather than typical like French tarot ones. So instead of starting with the Fool, it starts with the Moon, which has been very useful actually because the Moon and the Sun, which are the first two cards in this version, um, actually quite good at scene setting, it gives you a lot of specific like, landscapes in the cards and animals and objects, so it was actually very easy to get into the book that I've started writing um, and some clear ideas of characters as well, so it's actually started okay. I really was expecting this to just be like m mad nonsense, um, but it does seem to be developing themes um, with possibly some depth, so I'm quite a surprise that that's happened considering I've not planned anything. I feel Ursula Le Guin's influence has come out with some of the ways I'm, I'm looking at um, magic and men and women and um, the idea of like gods and goddesses who are perhaps not real or not alive anymore but still being worshipped um, which uh, Ursula Le Guin goes um, into in her book the Tombs of Atuan, which is the second Earthsea book, which is also my favourite. So yeah, I'm a little bit behind in the word count. I should be, I think, around 11,000 words, or should have been yesterday. And I'm actually about 10,000. That's because on one day I only wrote 142 words because I was really busy that day. 
but I'm the days I actually am writing properly I'm averaging more 2,000 words you're meant to write about 1667 words every day to get the 50,000 word word count but I, I yeah I'm determined to get back up to where I'm meant to be hopefully next Sunday I will say yes I'm back where I'm supposed to be or I'm ahead I mean it'd be nice to actually finish this book in fewer than 30 days because obviously there aren't 30 tarot cards to use, there are 22. I've stretched it into 26 because some have different names, or two names, so I've cheated a bit there. And if push comes to shove I can use the, the other cards, the number cards, which are the coins, rods, cups and swords, which is, is that the, I suppose the playing card? versions of them, um, like your aces, not your aces, your spades and your clubs and your diamonds and hearts. Um, I can use them if push comes to shove, but hopefully I won't need to. So yeah, that's where I'm at. Uh, excuse you. So yeah, it, it, it is a learning experience and it is a bit daunting not knowing what I'm going to write the next day. Today's an exception because I kind of know what I need to do next, but from tomorrow I don't know where I'm going to go. I'll just have to wait until the book gives me a prompt which may be quite good and maybe quite rubbish and I'll have to just sort of take it very um, loosely but it, it is interesting and I find actually it has been very helpful for then writing other things because as I say it sort of warms up those muscles and I'm not so concerned about writing something really good or deep or meaningful I'm just getting the word count up and it sort of exercises your mind and approaching other writing the same way because if you're doing a first draft or anything it doesn't need to be good it just needs to be on paper so you can then make it good later so yeah that's all i have for this week next week we'll see um how i've got up to which will be roughly the halfway mark so hopefully i should be at twenty five thousand words but or maybe slightly less than that because that would be yeah anyway um we'll see where i'm next week hopefully good news um if it's bad news i will have to say so hence the accountability um yeah, we'll see, we'll see if, if I continue doing pantsing stuff in the future because this is quite exciting. So yeah, see you next week. Mmm, my tea's cold. <laughs>